Hey everybody, Nick Lacamelli here. Today, it's a very serious video, and I have something to tell you. It's going to be hard to say, very hard to say. The name of the series is called I was I was Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. The name of the series is called I was wrong. I was wrong. That's right. That's the name of uh, the new series of videos that I'm going to kind of be putting out here. And um, I was wrong, sort of. And what I'm going to be doing is, so I have over 200 videos on my YouTube channel. I started it, um, you know, maybe three years ago. A lot has changed um, since then. And as I look back on some of my videos, I I don't really agree with everything, and it, it I I feel the need to kind of revisit some topics and um, kind of call myself out a little bit and add some corrections or a little like uh, comments here and there just to clarify um, how things have changed and how my perspective uh, has changed since then. Now, anytime um, anyone puts out content. Uh, you know, consistent content, writing, videos, anything, there's always that risk of of, uh, of things changing. Um, but the the piece that you you write or the video that you make is constant. That's always going to be there, regardless of how you change, how science changes, how anything changes. The way we minimize being wrong, is by not being um, a zealot or not being overly ambitious with the things that we're saying, not being closed-minded, you know, having an open mind, always leaving things um, kind of open-ended for um, in further study or say things like, in my opinion, um, rather than, than kind of say things as fact, because things always change, and something like the sky is blue, um, you know, you never know. You just never know what's going to come out, what's going to change. And the last thing that I, and pretty much anyone, I, I think, would want to do is put out misinformation. So um, the purpose of, of my channel and everything that I do is I want to... Um, be the resource uh, that that my younger self would have um, found value in and um, and would have benefited from because so many others have been that role for me and I want to be that role to others so this series is going to be called I was wrong I'm very fortunate I, I think in my opinion that nothing that I've put out has really been too too much um, misinformation or, or is, is so wrong that um, you know, I took a complete 180 uh, in my views or the, or what the science shows. So I'm fortunate for that. But this these these videos are a little bit too easy to to come by with things that I would change in videos that I've um, recorded. So nonetheless, um, taking a uh, a bite or a slice or maybe half of the pie, um, the humble pie. And uh, yeah, so we're going to get rolling with this series called I Was Wrong. And here we go. So here we go with the first installment of the I Was Wrong series. Today, it's all about posture. We're going to bring up one of my old videos, and I'm going to have a voiceover with some comments regarding the video. Hope you enjoy. Friday, today is a very special day. We are talking about how important posture is on shoulder health. One of the most common causes of shoulder pain is something called impingement. Now I'm going to stop it right there because giving it a name like impingement 
in my opinion, creates some fear around the symptoms. Impingement as a diagnosis is a very nonspecific uh, classification of shoulder pain. By giving patients this quote-unquote diagnosis, it almost makes um, gives them the idea that there's something broken or, or they have something or like a disease. Impingement is just um, a broad umbrella term non-specific to a certain type of shoulder pain. Impingement just means whenever anything gets pinched in between two structures. In the shoulder, one of the most common structures to get impinged is one of your rotator cuff muscles called your supraspinatus. Let's take a closer look at where that muscle sits and what it does. So the quick anatomy lesson here is on point, and I definitely 100% agree with it, but it's when I start getting into the mechanism of impingement that I'm going to stop it again and make some more comments. And I talk about impingement of the supraspinatus tendon um, in the clips that follow, and there's actually many, many, many structures that can be impinged um, besides the supraspinatus tendon. So it's also kind of misleading, um, almost as if like the supraspinatus tendon is the only structure that can get impinged, um, and that's not the case. So here is the shoulder from behind. This is your shoulder blade, and then the spine of your scapula here that you can kind of feel when you go and touch your back. The uh, supraspinatus is one of your rotator cuff muscles, and it sits right in this little gully here. And so the, the muscle belly sits here, and then it runs under this space here and attaches to your arm bone here. So what it does is when you go to lift your arm up, what it does is it pulls it in the socket. It pulls it into the socket to stabilize it as you go to raise your arm. This way when you go to raise your arm you don't kind of get this motion and your arm kind of your humeral head doesn't kind of move around in that socket that supraspinatus tendon along with the other rotator cuff muscles kind of contract to push this head and stabilize it into the socket so that you kind of get this smooth movement when you go to raise your arm now you could see that that runs through a pretty tight space here right under this uh, under your acromion here this space is called the subacromial space and it's a very tight space uh, you know there's there's bursa in there and and different structures so there's not much room for this tendon to kind of slide back and forth and do its job so yes it is a very tight space but it was designed like that and it, it functions perfectly fine like that so um, that the fact that it's a tight space yes it is tight but our bodies are made to to work with that so you can imagine uh, if anything were to make this space get smaller, um, you can kind of get some irritation there because it's going to get pinched in between the humeral head and the bottom of your acromion here. So yes, it makes sense that if that subacromial space were to get smaller, we would um, increase our risk of impingement on the supraspinatus tendon, just like I'm showing here. However, what we find is that that kind of crunching down of that submicrobial space is actually normal. And uh, it, it does get smaller with normal shoulder movement. Um, within a certain range of motion um, into shoulder elevation, that subacromial space is supposed to get smaller and then expand. That is just normal function of the shoulder and not pathological. So how can posture affect impingement of the supraspinatus? Research shows that when you retract and depress your shoulders, right, so when you bring your shoulders down and back and stand up nice and tall, as opposed to this with your shoulders rounded forward, when your shoulders are down and back, that subacromial space actually opens up by 30%. Okay, so you're relieving pressure on all those structures that travel through that tight space and reducing your chances of impingement. So this part is kind of misleading and I regret saying that research shows because whenever you preface something with research shows uh, it's almost like I feel like an infomercial um, trying to sell something or you know I don't know I 
this is just kind of misleading, um, saying that keeping the shoulders down and back opens up that space. Yes, that may be true, but again, that space is meant to kind of get smaller and get larger with normal shoulder movement. Now, this is important for everyday people who may not exercise, but it's super important for people who exercise and do a lot of overhead pressing or even um, overhead athletes who throw or you know, swing a tennis racket or even professions uh, like painting or, or carpentry that involve a lot of shoulder movement. Very, very important to focus on your posture. One tip I could give you throughout your day, whenever you can think of it, just squeeze your shoulders down and back. Squeeze your shoulders down and back. Just a couple times, down and back, down and back, down and back. This cue for keeping the shoulders down and back and talking about overhead athletes or occupations that require a lot of overhead movement is also kind of misleading because we don't want the shoulder blades to be locked in that down and back position especially when we are reaching overhead or performing any kind of overhead movement. That shoulder blade needs to move. It cannot be pinned down uh, down and back. It needs to be able to move and actually protraction where the shoulder blade rounds forward is actually very very important in the function of the shoulder. So there is no good uh, posture or bad posture. Um, there's just, uh, it gets problematic when we don't move out of a certain posture. So keeping the shoulders forward, uh, kind of rounded forward all the time is not good. But standing up straight with your shoulders locked in down and back for a long time is also not good. Um, either way, if you sit in those positions too long, it's going to get probably a little uncomfortable, a little painful, and um, you're going to have to move. So the most important thing with posture is not that you attain some perfect posture, quote unquote. It's more important that you move and you keep changing and altering your posture. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you want, and we'll see you next time.